Health care is topic number one for the new Republican-controlled House. And joining us this morning from Dallas is Republican Congressman Michael Burgess, a medical doctor as well as vice chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Congressman, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, obviously, this conversation uh, is a lot different uh, after the weekend uh, that we've had watching the events in Tucson. Uh, a piece in the Washington Post today talks about uh, the debate over health care and, uh, and how it must continue despite the country having to get over what, what happened this weekend. And I'm wondering, how does the debate change? Um, and knowing that there's going to be this pause in legislation this week, how does it, when does it move forward and how? Well, first off, let me just say we're all heartbroken over the events that occurred over the weekend. Um, that was tough to watch on so many different levels. The um, fact that frequently disagree with uh, Representative Giffords does, does not mitigate the fact that this is an enormous personal tragedy and tragedy for our staff. We still have to do our work, and people expect us to do our work. And the repeal vote, although it's been postponed from the immediate future, I, I expect the House will take it up in, in fairly short order. You know, you have to balance things. I don't hear any noise from the administration. I don't hear any, any talk from the administration that they're ratcheting down their implementation. If anything, uh, Nancy Ann DeParle in December was talking about we're into phase two, 2011 is the implementation phase, and we're, we're going to be we're going to be moving along pretty rapidly. That's the whole reason for doing the repeal vote so quickly was to get people on record and, and to make that statement uh, to the administration that, hold on a minute, the American people have not been sold on this idea. They elected a Congress or at least a House of Representatives who will reflect that, and, and it's important to get that out there and on the record. Um, over the weekend, uh, it was an interview that David Gregory did with, uh, with Senator Reid. I think it was taped before the events of Saturday. But he called any attempt to repeal a gesture in futility. Um, so is that what you mean when you say that the other side hasn't backed down on their rhetoric either? Well, my, my, my greater concern is the rapidity with which the implementation is occurring, and that's a function of the administration, not of the not of the Congress. But the uh, the statement made by the House of Representatives with a repeal vote could then perhaps put uh, a little bit of the brakes on the implementation. Uh, most people didn't pay attention to what happened last Wednesday. In addition to swearing in a new speaker, uh, Secretary Sebelius said, "Hey, I've decided to move the Office of Consumer Information and Insurance Oversight back into uh, into HHS." At at CMS. What does that mean? Well, here was a brand new federal agency that was being created where there hadn't been one before. Its whole purpose was the national regulation of health insurance, something the federal government had never done before. When I asked top people in that agency, where is the legislative language in Obamacare that says you can do this? Uh, they said there is none. It is just something we felt we needed in order to implement the law. Well, wait a minute. You're doing this without a congressional authorization. They certainly did it off budget. Uh, these are the kinds of questions that needed to be asked in the last Congress and weren't because the Democratic Congress wasn't interested in asking questions about the implementation. I was asking those questions, some other people were, and in fact they pulled that agency down and pulled it back within the confines are of you, HHS. Are, are you arguing that, that steps like that, not they shouldn't be taken at all because they're not part of the law of the land? Or would it make you feel better if the courts somehow resolved this issue once and for all before the administration? took steps that they think they need uh, to support the, the legislation. Well, I think the court challenge is a parallel track. And, of course, we've seen the news this morning that, what, Ohio and Oklahoma have uh, have joined the other attorneys general in 21 other states. We're, we're getting close to half of the states are, are filing lawsuits against the individual mandate. But I think that's a separate track. I think that's a parallel track, a very important one, to be sure. But but separate. The implementation that I'm worried about is, is the federal agencies. Look, we all know here's an administration that has said, well, we can no longer legislate, so we'll just regulate our, our way to get what we want. And that's what's going on. We've got to be able to dial that back. Some of it you can do with budgetary control. Some of it you can right. do with appropriations. Some of it you just have to do by shining a light on, hey, what's going on here? Brand new federal agency. Didn't exist six months ago. It's hired 200 people. What does it mean? What is it going to do? Understood. Is there some... Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, my, my one question, and unfortunately we have to go, wrongly or rightly, 
does Tucson affect support for repeal by any measure, even on the margin? I, I cannot speak to on the margins. I will just say I think it's important for us to do our work. We were sent there to do this job, and, and, and it certainly must be done. We all have heavy hearts today because of, the, of what happened over the weekend, but that doesn't negate the fact that we must uh, take action on this law. Congressman, uh, on, on a tough week uh, for the whole country, we appreciate you uh, continuing the debate. Uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Congressman Burgess.